Yes, it was a very busy day yesterday with the MPC, especially a special session because it was all uh, combined into one day instead of two days. But let's take that conversation further. We have Longi Dafoe, he's analyst with Financial Derivatives Company, and Longi is joining us for the first time in the studio. Normally, we would see you virtually. Yeah. Longi, it's good to see you physically. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. So, did you expect that there would be a change, uh, you know, in the decision? Were you expecting uh, a whole stance from the MPC? Yeah, uh, I believe at this point holding rates sacrosanct has basically become ritualistic at this point. Yes, the because MPC 16 meeting. out of 18. Yes, and I believe this was also about the 8th or ninth consecutive uh, rate hold. So yeah, we did expect uh, rates to be held the same at 11.5% at the NPR meeting today. Sorry, yesterday as well. Yeah. yeah, incidentally, at the time when the MPC was sitting, I mean, the MPC in Ghana was also sitting, and they came out with a hike in their rates. You know, because when you look at what's going on, the level of inflation and even the expected inflation, especially when you talk of energy, fuel, you know, like the CBN governor noted, they're even promising that the CBN uh, will intervene, you know, in the supply, uh, then it's understandable that that a lot of people, uh, a lot of countries hiking their rates, you know, to try to mop up some of yeah. that, you know. But in Nigeria, even in Nigeria, I think this is the first time we're having some members of the committee asking mm -hmm. that there should be a hike in the interest rates. Yes, so like you said, uh, Nigeria is in fact the anomaly right now in, what, in terms of what's happening uh, globally. Like you also said, uh, Ghana, I believe, raised their rates by about 2.5%, a very South aggressive Africa. move. South Africa, Egypt as well also raised their rates and also devalued their currency. So countries globally are taking really hard stances to combat inflation. But uh, Nigeria seems to, like you said, also be, be the anomaly in fact. Uh, I believe the, MP, the uh, MPC has said that they are taking this stance in order to uh, under been economic growth and to prevent uh, economic growth from faltering. But at the same time, I believe it's also uh, important to note that the uh, grave effect that inflation is posing on our economy and also to combat that in a way that would be most effective to hold economic growth while also preventing inflationary pressure. Yeah, yeah. remember the panel that we had on during the uh, decision yesterday talked about the MPR, which, which of course has been retained at 11.5. Yeah. That's uh, the real rates, the real interest rates, uh, it could be up to 2025, which is what some members of the committee asked for. Do you think that the NPR at 11.5 actually reflects the reality? Uh, in truth, no. So there's always been uh, concerns about uh, data, whether actual data, the real accurate data has actually been used to... Uh calculates uh, the inflation rate. There's also, there's also uh, slippages possibly happening that we might not be aware of. So in terms of uh, data accuracy, there's of course questions uh, to be had. And in regards to how the uh, MP, or sorry, in regards to how the MPC voted, like you also said, uh, six members also held, decided to hold the rates constant. Yes. Three decided, pushed for a 25 base points increase and one pushed for a 50 base points That's increase. That's really high. Really high. 50. So I, I do believe, we do envisage that possibly by May, as early as May, we will see most of the uh, MPC members was voting to push the uh, to push the uh, interest rate upwards. Yeah. Uh, you know, we also had a manufacturer on the panel yesterday, and the question begs that: How impactful really is the decision of the MPC on the everyday life, on your everyday yeah. life, on the real sector? How impactful are they? Just figures that we come to analyze. Do they really have an impact? Uh, yes, in fact, they do really do have an impact. But I do believe it's also important to note the impact of a currency. So I do believe currency, the, re the uh, present currency rate, I believe Naira is currently at about 589 or so. I do believe that also has a major impact. And I do believe it's something that should be uh, taken into account in regards to uh, the uh, NPR rate as well. Yeah. So you do think that maybe by May we might see a hike of the rates? That would we, be, we that'll be like an, year, an right? unusual yes. meeting. It will be very unusual indeed, yeah. <laughs> All right. So and, uh, one of the major considerations, of course, at the NPC, as it is for the whole world now, is uh, the uh, Russian invasion uh, yeah. into Ukraine. And, and that's uh, moving a whole lot of things. We talk about oil prices. We talk about commodities. You know, I think uh, oil prices between 114 when I got that figure, but I think it went as much as 119, you know, and um, this is obviously sipping into the Nigerian economy. 
Yes, uh, indeed it is. So Nigeria is experiencing high levels of uh, imported inflation. This also uh, in regards to the recent uh, power outages and power cuts that we've also having. So it's really exacerbating uh, inflation, inflationary pressure and pushing things up. Uh, diesel prices, I believe, uh, domestically are going up as high as about, I believe, uh, 715 yeah, modern, for yes. diesel, more than in some areas. Petrol has sort of moderated, although it's still relatively high compared to what it used to be before. So uh, this is having a very big impact on businesses. So uh, given the fact that electricity has been very uh, infrequent, more businesses are having to rely on generators in order to meet their business activities, in order to carry out uh, activities and so on. So this is really having an impact on cost of business, which is, of course, uh, pushing up inflationary pressure. Uh, it also ties into uh, what you mentioned about uh, commodities. So uh, businesses that, farmers and businesses that do uh, involve uh, commodities, uh, transportation costs and so on, are also pushing up the value of commodities and this is really having an effect on the everyday man. Yeah. Mm. So um, do you, there's also the other side of the subsidy when you talk about oil prices. You know, I know you said that the petrol has moderated, but somebody is paying for that difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is, I think we've already raised 1.25 yeah. billion dollars uh, euro, euro bond, bond market, yeah. as early as this year is you know that's also include we start talking about the debt, debt. stock yeah, exactly. in 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 a short while and this is depriving the country of capital uh, expenditure capital infrastructure infrastructure yeah. uh, uh, spending yeah, indeed. You do have fun funds that could have been diverted to infrastructure spending, like you said, are now going towards uh, covering the cost of fuel subsidies. And this is also, like we said, also really having a negative impact on uh, the economy and the everyday man. Uh, I do believe also it ties into what we've said about uh, economic growth and economic uh, development. Infrastructure spending has uh, been relatively low compared to what it used to be before. So I do believe we can do better in that regard. Mm. We can do better if the fund is available. Exactly. But the UAE is talking about uh, uh, upping production quota to meet up with the shortage that we have in the global oil space. Yes. How's that going? Yeah, uh, so the UAE, since the begin onset of the Russian invasion, the UAE is now actually the first uh, member of OPEC to push for an increase uh, in production quotas across the body. So uh, what this could mean essentially is that we will more than likely see uh, more oil coming into the market. Although I, we do not believe that this would necessarily be enough to cool off the uh, high price of oil that we're currently seeing. Uh, the OPEC uh, Secretary General himself did actually come out and say that there's no capacity on earth capable of uh, replacing 7 million barrels of crude that comes from Russia if indeed uh, a full embargo on Russia is placed. So uh, I do believe even if OPEC were to raise their production quotas, it would not necessarily be enough to cool prices in the way that we hope. Uh, also, it also ties into what we've been seeing in Nigeria in regards to low production levels. I, uh, in total, I believe about, we do believe about 900,000 barrels per day are lost. 900,000 barrels per day of capacity are lost uh, in terms of uh, OPEC production levels, uh, especially from nations such as Nigeria, Malaysia, and Angola, which have been unable to, which have constantly been unable to meet up their production quotas. So, in fact, the only countries in OPEC presently uh, that are able to increase capacity are Saudi and, to a lesser extent, the UAE. So, it is a very mixed bag to that regard. Yes. Yeah, well, the CBN governor also talked about that yesterday the issue of oil theft, crude oil yes. theft and vandalism being a major problem. And then, of course, we have the force majeure. Uh, I, I think two majors declared force majeure, was it last week? Yeah. It's up to two weeks now. And they act outrightly said that even though last month we couldn't even meet, meet up with our quota, it was 10% less, we still have 170,000 barrels per day that will be reduced. Yeah. So, I mean, at a time when the oil space is booming, when Nigeria could beef up some of its reserve and all that, we are actually losing out because we are losing uh, 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 production and yet we are still paying We're the still subsidy. We are still paying the price of subsidies, exactly. Uh, like you rightfully said, we are in fact losing production. Uh, if OPEC were to agree to increase production quotas, this would present a huge loss to Nigeria because this is, this is already we're losing an estimated uh, is it about $40 million a day or so in lost production Yeah, because uh, I capacity. think OPEC, yeah. OPEC quota to us is about 1.8 million, yes. uh, million barrels a day. Meanwhile, we're doing about 1.2 or 1 .2 less now. 1.2 or less. Um, Meanwhile, we're yes. supposed to be in about 1.7 uh, million 1 barrels. Yeah. So we are losing a huge, uh, a huge amount of uh, potential gains from this, uh, from what's going on in terms of the lost production capacity.
yeah, and there's yeah. nothing we can do about that, at least yeah. for now. At least in the near term, exactly. But we do hope uh, maybe as things go on, maybe possibly more reforms, possibly uh, more security put on pipelines and if you're just uh, trying to get operations in line, we might be able to see an increase in Nigeria's production quota in the mid to uh, do, long Do you time. think that uh, um, with, we're expecting Dangote's refinery to come yeah. on board, I think this year, yes. you know, do you think that perhaps if we did local refinery, it would reduce the thefts? Do you, do you think, I don't know? Um, also, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, possibly it might have a, it might have an impact in reducing thefts, but then I think what is also important to note is whether the refinery might have the capacity to fulfill total domestic uh, demand that we have in Nigeria. So I think that is really the question. With yeah. That, yeah. But I mean, we should, so like somebody noted, we should also remember that Dangote is in business yes. to make yes, money. exactly. It's not a exactly. charity organization. Yeah. Okay, and closely related to the war, uh, you have uh, the forecast that Nigeria's sweet imports uh, surge in 2021. Uh, well, not the forecast now. Yeah. Uh, surge by 71% to 1.29 trillion naira in 2021. One. And of yeah. course, with this uh, Russia and Ukraine issue, we know that uh, the wheat available has drastically That's reduced, reduced yes. i mean uh, people are turning to the alternative which is corn and even that has not been easy for nigeria uh, and so we're looking at issues like the price of bread and yeah. uh, feed meal you know i i just wonder what it would do to to nigeria's standards of living yeah uh, not just bread wheat, wheat has durum wheat especially is used in pasta uh, bread indomie lots and lots of different commodities that are consumed by nigerians on a daily basis uh, what is also important to know is that yes it increased by 71 uh, percent uh, coming up from last year but then it's also it also represents a more than three about 300 so it's a tripling of what we saw in 2019 so this is triple the value that we saw in 2019 the current wheat uh, import bill so uh uh, going forward, uh, or rather, what is important to note in regards to that is that wheat, we are more than likely going to see wheat uh, imports rise further as the war continues, as the war goes on. Uh, but where is the wheat that we are going to be importing? Because, I mean, yeah. the major producers of wheat are at war. Yeah, Russia and Ukraine totally account for over about 20% of uh, global wheat exports. But there are countries like uh, Argentina also that also... Canada. Argentina, Canada that also supply wheat. So it's going to be a really tight market. And, of course, prices will be pushed to new heights. In order so to, so, so yeah. we produce, Nigeria produces, I think, just about 8%. Yeah, about 1%. Why can't we increase wheat. that capacity? What stops Nigeria? Uh, at the end of the day, it was not availability of funds, the availability of uh, the manpower, the skills, the... I, I do believe we actually have enough arable land, but yeah, we funds and manpower and that. skills needed to actually uh, produce that, the level of wheat that will be necessary to fulfill domestic demand for wheat. Yeah. Mm. And uh, what else is going on in the commodity space? Uh, yeah. how, how is... Uh, how are prices? Yeah, uh, prices, of course, are relatively high right now. Also, uh, I do believe something that is of note is actually what's happening in regards to aluminium. Russia, Russia sorry, Australia has actually banned the, uh, the export of uh, yes. aluminium to Russia and this has actually pushed up aluminium prices to significant highs. And the reason Australia accounts for about 20% uh, of uh, Russia's uh, aluminium imports. And Australia has actually taken this stance as a way to sanction Russia because uh, they do believe that without aluminium, Russia will be unable to uh, make arms, which will, of course, fuel their war efforts. Uh, but it's also having a negative effect of pushing up prices globally. So aluminium, Russian aluminium, goes almost everywhere. You have it in automotives, you have it in aeronautics, you have it in constructions, roofings. So it's a very uh, important commodity, and now we're seeing it go high like this. So it's more than like, it's of course going to push up inflationary pressures even high globally. Well, some countries yeah. are going to benefit from that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> country, countries will benefit from countries will benefit from that. Other aluminium and manufacturing countries, other uh, countries that do have a foothold in this uh, market. Mm. Uh, one thing also that I do think uh, is also of note is what has happened in regards to uh, oil. The, so uh, the EU, how do the EU stands in regards to uh, the Russian uh, oil embargo. So uh, I believe uh, Germany has actually come out uh, in support of, not rather in support, but rather Germany has made the decision to not place an embargo on Russia because they account for about uh, over half of Germany's exports, Germany, uh, Netherlands especially, and also Poland, 
they, these are countries that are really dependent on Russian exports, Russian gas and oil exports. And the, 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 there's, the, there's the efforts, you know, to ramp up for uh, UAE. I know uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson went to the UAE last week, yeah. you know, to try to, you know, build fences. I know Germany also has an agreement with, with Qatar, yes, you exactly. know, to also yeah. give them. Uh, so let's see what comes of all of this agreement and talks, yeah. because really uh, they want to cut off dependence on Russian on oil, Russian oil. Exactly. but of course uh, necessity is also necessity is a major exactly. thing to, to yes. consider. All right, Longi Davop, therefore, thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing your thoughts with us. This thank you for morning. having me. Yeah. All right, so after the break, uh, we'll have a conversation on Central Bank again, but not the MPC. Find out what we'll be talking about from the Central Bank after the break. This is Business Morning on Channels Television.